Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and over. So hello, I thought I'd do a little cannabis and creativity show for you guys today. Um, and also because um, a woman who's been following me, I think believe on this channel and also on Instagram, asked me a question about the cloth dolls that I make and whether or not I use any kind of stuffing to make these dolls. And I was trying to explain to her the process of how I make the dolls without any kind of stuffing, like the polyfill that they sell at craft stores like Michael's or fabric stores. They'll sell a big bag of like fiber fill or whatever and um, I did start using that initially when I first started making dolls back in uh, the early 2000s but I since changed my approach because the fiber fill is too much like 100% polyester and materials that won't break down easily so <clears throat> why not just use what I already have um, and find a way to do it. Um, I wanted to show you the Art Dog Quarterly magazine that I used to get, but there was an artist in there, and I can't find which magazine that is, that does that technique, and that's where I found it. I can't remember the artist's name. But she, she made what she considered to be rag dolls. Uh, some people think that my, my dolls are considered to be rag dolls, um, dolls made out of rags or whatever, old torn up clothing. Um, that was a term for them, rag dolls. <clears throat> or someone just call them cloth dolls, fabric dolls. I call them fabric dolls and I consider them to be art dolls because I don't see them as something that people, you know, a little kid can play with because these dolls, they take a lot of time and energy to create. And a lot of the creativity comes about when I partake of canvas. It puts me in a really trance-like meditative uh, state of mind to where I can totally and truly focus in on the art project at hand. So before we get started on that, um, and bring about the said medicine. Let's see which container is it in. Or am I gonna have to get a refill? I might have to get a refill. The hops, perchance. Yeah, I'm low on medicine, so I'm trying to be conservative with it. Um, I think I have a joint in here that I'll smoke some of. And I have a tiny bit in here, too, as well. And no, there's not anything in there. I've seen things. <laughs> You know those times, huh? And it gets you get low, and then you just like you see something, but you didn't. This is from a mystery strain. Again, I rolled this joint from mystery strain. It's the mystery strain that I've been saying, smoking on for the past few days. That I said it smells like marzipan, and it's really nice. It seems like it's um, higher in the indica level than anything else. So I'm gonna spark this up, and we'll start on with a a session of um, art. And if you want, you can bring out some fabrics. What I'm gonna use is a, um, this old, uh, it's been washed already, it's just wrinkly, this old carton that I had dyed a long time ago a different color because it was actually an egg white, eggshell, like egg white, eggshell color. And <clears throat> I didn't want it, I wanted a darker color. And as you can see, I used some of the fabric for this dress I made as well but i'm going to demonstrate how to use that fabric into making um ouch there's a needle in there <laughs> into making these kind of dolls doll heads because the technique that i'm going to show you i used on making these kind of doll heads and all of my dolls really all my cloth dolls that i'm working recently and they're all that that kind of technique so those are not done either yet, but I just wanted to show those as an example. So let me find a lighter and then we can get this, this crafting party started. <laughs> this is like a party with all these dolls in here. <laughs> all right, I hope you guys have something wonderful to smoke and it's helping you with whatever conditions that you're dealing with right now in your life. And I hope that you could find art to be a very therapeutic thing to do when you're not feeling your best. So cheers to all of you and thank you for joining me today. Oh, that's lovely. This is actually my birthday joint from yesterday that I didn't smoke. 
<laughs> I was going to smoke it yesterday, but I didn't, so I'll save it for today. <coughs> <coughs> And today is Tuesday. I'm gonna have a bite of my cherry. I have a playful of like fruit here to to nibble on while I'm in here. Mmm, mm. I love cherries. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is get out some thread. To be any color, um, if you want the color to match with um. The fabric you can get matchy matchy and get like I'm using this gray fabric you can get gray thread if you want or even silver so I've got silver thread right here uh oh I got tangled my cat likes to get into my sewing box but anyway <clears throat> that's what cats love to do but here we go it's, this is silver I could use silver but that's not my, that much of the silver so when I only have a small amount I don't have like a big bulk of it like the black, I just use the black instead because, um, yeah, it's going to be you're not going to really see that much of the stitching. And if you see black with gray, it works well, anyways. So, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fabric and I'm just going to fold it over, and that's what I did with these other dolls. I'm just fold over the fabric until I have a really substantial shape for a doll head. You can do this with smaller doll heads if you're making a smaller doll you can do it on a smaller level like for instance this there's no stuffing in this doll head it's a blank doll head and i just did the same kind of approach smaller head same process so and this this head's going to be smaller than say these here this one or this one because you need more fabric to make a bigger head when you're not using fabric, <clears throat> I mean, when you're not using like fiber fill to stuff the dolls, you're gonna have to have more fabric if you want your doll heads or doll bodies to be bigger. So you just need more fabric because you're folding the fabric instead of stuffing the fabric. So, so basically, just do that, fold it over, and until you get like a head shape, you can make it an oval, you can make it a triangle, you can make it a square. You can, <laughs> So I'm just going to make a um, rectangular shape. So um, you could you could say for the argument in the case of uh, stuffing with fabric fill that you can cut out the shape and just fill it up, and then the shape will be perfectly that way. <clears throat> but I just don't want to encourage uh, bringing that forth into the world more and more the fiber fill because it's just it's just a hundred percent polyester there I'm sure there's fiber fill that people have have been making or put on the market that's 100% cotton but the thing with those is it's ex more expensive so <clears throat> if you don't want to spend an arm and a leg you know then that's your best bet to do that I'm just gonna cut this thread off of this project I was doing earlier and show you how to do this um, what I'm thinking about doing is making patreon videos with whatever I can't finish in this video, you could go over to my Patreon and um, see it there. So, see the continuing part of it all. Um, the process is definitely very fun. And so what I'm doing is I'm sewing this. I'm sewing the bottom part of it first. It doesn't matter which order you sew, what side on, as long as it all gets sewed up. Um, you can refine the, the, the shape of it by just embroidering it um, <clears throat> with many applications of thread. Um, when people find out that I hand sew the dolls and the handbags that I create, they wonder if it's strong enough because I'm not a machine, you know? <laughs> and people equate, mach when they think of a machine and sewing, they think it's going to be much stronger than someone who's sewing it by their hands. But I'm not going to just sew each side of this doll's head with, you know, one row of stitching or two rows of stitching or even just three rows of stitching. I'm going to stitch it several times around so that that guarantees 
that your uh, the doll will last a long time. And if you take good care of the doll, then it'll definitely last a long time. It's not just all on me, it's all on you too. When someone purchases one of my dolls, <clears throat> you can't expect it to stay intact if you're not taking care of it, you're leaving it out somewhere or whatever. Um, I put a lot of time and effort into making these dolls. So there was an incident where I had my, my one of my dolls up in an art show and a photo was taken and putting up on social media showing this little girl twirling around with the doll. And this doll was an expensive doll. It was an art doll. And it was made out of, had shells all over it from the sea, from the ocean that I collected to put on it. It had lace, it had, uh, it was it was fragile. It was an art doll. It wasn't a um, doll that you get from Toys R Us or something like that. It wasn't like a plastic doll. Yet, um, the gallery owner allowed this child to do that and encouraged it and took a photo of it and it was on social media. And that, that right there is like a mockery of my art, of what I was trying to do with that specific doll. When people think of dolls, they think of playthings all the time. In history of time, the indigenous people did not create dolls for um, kids to play with. Um, I read a, an article on one of my shows talking about the Kachina dolls, and that was on my birthday, actually. Uh, <clears throat> birthday um, celebration slash talking about Kachina dolls, because someone had mentioned on this channel when I did a cannabis and creativity show, they said, hey, the dolls remind me of Kachina dolls. So then I did a show about that. And basically, you could go back and watch those parts one and parts two of that show. I'll tell you a little bit about what I was talking about as far as the Hopi, the Hopi tribe, how they um, they would create these dolls called Kachina dolls and each doll would have imbued within them the energy of a specific deity. And that doll would be getting to, given to a specific child um, <clears throat> to help that child, to protect that child. Um, so they made Kachina dolls for for children as young as an infant. So, and the ones that are made for infants um, naturally are a lot more simplistic. Um, but yeah, they made them for children in that way, but not for them to like swing them around and pose them like a Barbie doll and stuff. But although, as I read along in that article, he did talk about how as um, modern times came about you know, as the years went by, they started making the Kachina dolls more posable, where you can move them, that you could turn their head and pose them into different positions to enact, you know, whatever action you want them to portray based on the deity that they are. So it's kind of, it's very fascinating, that kind of fascinating, it's very fascinating. Um, even if you don't, you're not into dolls, but People, a lot of people weren't interested in dolls because they always equated it with a child's toy. And that's not the history of dolls at all, whatsoever. It was never meant to be a child's toy. It's a spiritual, spiritual symbolic object representing whatever the doll maker wanted it to represent. <clears throat> and that's the energy that they put upon the dolls. A lot of people got scared of dolls because they just think they're creepy and they think of horror movies and porcelain dolls. <clears throat> Obviously that's going to be used in a horror movie, the whole doll image, because it's people are afraid of things like that, dolls, because they're a representation of an actual being living on this planet, you know, that's just symbolizing actual human body and that can be really unnerving for people to look at, especially in horror movies. Uh, horror movies have definitely changed people's, or shaped people's opinions on what a doll it, re it really is about. <clears throat> they have come up with some really creepy dolls during the years. <laughs> um, I mean, I know that my dolls can be seen as creepy and scary, 
but sometimes those dolls are a little too lifelike the ones that actually look like a baby you know and they make the skin i remember when i was younger in elementary school and there were children that were wanting this specific um, infant doll because she looked it looked so lifelike the skin was like real skin and um, you can change the diaper and all this stuff i mean that kind of stuff hap was existing back in the day but back back in the 80s i think that's when that doll showed up and i can't remember the brand name of the doll but it looked so real that it was kind of frightening to me that it looked like someone had really brought an infant to you know the elementary school <laughs> it was bizarre how real they could get people can get with their creation of the doll as a form of art. <clears throat> I have a few people on my, um, almost said MySpace. <laughs> That's a long time ago. I have a few people on my Facebook who are uh, what they call reborn artists. They make these newborn babies that look real. They're a doll artists, another form of doll artists. And um, I can only have two of those kind of artists on. <laughs> On my Facebook, it's just, it's just too much for me. I mean, there's definitely a talent involved and a skill involved in making something like that, but that's just not my, my thing. I don't want to make something that looks like that. But that's why they do it, you know, and they obviously enjoy what they do. I've never really been interested in, in creating extreme, extreme realism within my dolls. Because first and foremost, they thought they start off as expression, and then whatever happens after that <laughs> is what happens after that. <laughs> so basically, as you can see, I sew the bottom, I'm sewing the side, and then I'm gonna sew the top, and that's all there is to sewing these doll heads and doll bodies. That's how I do the doll bodies as well. Um, I could make my dolls posable. Um, I did make. Um, did make one doll, it was a mermaid doll that had fingers and it was a big one. It was wider than the width of this camera, <laughs> but it was really long. It was a mermaid doll and it was uh, made out of fabric. It was a fabric mermaid doll and it was huge. And it was a commission piece that I sold to a really kind woman. She uh, commissioned me to do that and uh, a paper doll that's just like it. And the paper doll and the cloth doll had a little mermaid doll with the big doll. so. <laughs> That was quite the project, but I enjoyed it thoroughly. It was a, quite an epic project for real. But yeah, she really seemed to enjoy it. But that was the only time that I made posable like fingers was with that mermaid doll. I, you could actually move the fingers because I used um, wire within each finger. So that was not easy, but um, most of the time I'm not making dolls that are posable. I just make these type of dolls. Let me see. And now I can't figure out how to get to this thread. <laughs> oh, ay ay ay. Let's see, here we go. Is that it? Okay, found it. <laughs> so yeah. Oh man. I hope you guys are taking time out to do something creative today. And maybe try to plan on doing something creative. Uh, let's see what time step we're at. Okay, 18 minutes. Try to find, figure out something to do creative every day. Because uh, especially with Mercury retrograde getting into swing on the 26th. Um, I did a show that's loading up on my laptop right now for my Dark Moon Doll channel. Talking about Mercury in retrograde, which starts the 26th. Uh, this month and then ends August 19th so check out that show I did about that and you'll <clears throat> you'll be able to see the challenges that you're gonna have with this period of mercury retrograde you have to really take things slow with mercury retrograde just in general no matter when it comes around um, because it can make you react irrationally sometimes to things that Having a cool head might work a lot better. Sometimes you have to get your emotions out though, I mean, and explain things to people, tell them how you're feeling, for real, to get your um, thoughts across. 
or else you just get steamrolled all over. Yep, it happens. And especially, they even mentioned that in that Mercury Retrograde article I was reading on today's show for, um, for Spirituality Talk on my Dark Moon Doll channel. They talked about the, <clears throat> about getting your, getting your message across, kind of, but, you know, most people that are usually are quiet, um, usually get talked over when they start, do start to talk, because people are used to them being quiet and not saying as much, mainly listening. But what people don't realize is the people that are quiet and appearing to be shy are the ones that whenever they talk, they get talked over and they, their voice isn't heard unless they're yelling. And that's the only time the voice gets heard. So Sometimes you have to speak up in order to get your voice heard. Because if you don't, then people are just going to think you're just some punk ass or something. Or somebody who has no backbone and you can just walk all over that person and just talk all over them and make them feel like their words mean nothing. So if you come across people like that, just, just walk away <laughs> if you can. Or if you can avoid not walking away, maybe just don't say anything. But if you can't avoid not saying anything, speak your mind, you know, get it out, get your voice out, and let it be heard, and then move on, you know. Not everybody in this life is going to like you. It's just how it is. People are trying so hard to be liked by everyone, and that's just not going to happen. Especially if you're coming at somebody with a controlling attitude. This is basically how you make one of these doll heads. You saw the process of how I did it. If you wanted like a bigger doll head, then you need more fabric. So that's basically how you do it. I don't use any stuffing or anything like that. I'm going to be sewing this a lot better. But just for this show, this is how you do it. So, um, and if you wanted to add eyes on it and stuff, sometimes I'll have little things like this I've already made. So you can just do like this, put an eye there like that, sew that on. Because um, <clears throat> I got a bunch of this type of fabric from these pants that I really liked wearing, but they got all raggedy and old because I was wearing them so much. You guys probably remember these pants. I wore them so much in the, in the retro videos from back when I lived <laughs> in another house. I used to wear those pants every now and then, and now they're trashed. Um, they got torn up on the bottoms and shit because I've had them for years. So I'm going to take this and make it into a bead for the eye. And um, I'm going to take a puff and yeah, let's chillax a little bit with you guys for a bit. And hopefully you are sewing something along with me. Um, feel free to uh, tell me what projects, sewing projects you're working on or art projects in general that you're working on. Because this is a time where you can just spend to yourself in meditation. Get you, if you have any herb on you, even better, you know, because it really helps for focus for me. These cherries are good. Getting warm. Mm. How rude of me eating on camera. At least it's fruit. I have eaten on camera, though, when I do my recipe videos. It makes no sense not to because then it makes you, it makes people concerned. Man, is she really? Uh, is that really any good for me to eat? <laughs> if she's not eating it, is it any good? <laughs> oh, yeah. One puff. I'm <clears throat> back into it and some water down. So basically with with these, like I don't stuff this either, like the <coughs> excuse me. The features on the doll face, I don't stuff them with any fiber fill or anything either. This is the 
Okay, for like round eyes like this, this is what I do. Let me find some thread. Okay, here we go. Let me thread the needle of my... Thread the needle. If you don't know how to thread a needle, um, you can check out my Dark Moon Doll channel and I have some videos on simple sewing techniques. Some simple sewing tips if you're interested. Someone asked me if I would make a few videos about that and I did that. I showed how to thread a needle. <clears throat> I showed how to sew simple stitches by hand and also how to hem pants. So I'm by no means like a seamstress or uh, someone who sews like no one's business on a sewing machine because I've done all of my sewing for years by hand. And that's not to brag about anything. I just don't have a working sewing machine and I haven't for years. Uh, I had a sewing machine that my husband found um, from a, it was a pawn shop. And I thought it was gonna work, but it doesn't work, so. And I've realized it'll probably cost more money than it's worth to have it looked at or fixed, if it can be fixed, so. Just kind of gave up on that and just is diving into sewing by hand and learning a lot. Learning a lot about patience. Learning a lot about how hand sewing can be the best therapy ever. You know? So I'm going to show you. I'm taking this piece of raggedy fabric. It's clean. I clean all my fabric and dry it. So none to worry if you buy something from my shop. It's going to be clean. Just because it's recycled doesn't mean it's not clean. So basically what I'm going to do is going to roll this up kind of in a ball, I'll show you how I'm doing it. <clears throat> Just so only the design part is going to be exposed for the eye. So I'm just kind of making it to where it's going to be a circular shape. And I'm going to have to hold it in place with my finger. And then I'm going to come in there and just sew around that area so it stays in place. And it's a lot of times it's easier for me to show you what I mean than to actually explain it verbally. Because some things you just have to try <clears throat> on your own, trial and error and see what works. Because my technique may not work for you. You may have an easier technique or one that just works the best for you. And this is how I do it to make the round, rounded um, eyes, fabric eyes for the dolls. This is one of the techniques that I use. Because if I had like fiber fill and stuff like that, I could just I could just cut out two circles, right? And just fill it and then sew them together, leave an opening on the top, and then fill it with fiber fill. And I did that in the beginning of doll making for a bit. Because a lot of other doll makers who make cloth and fabric dolls were making it using that uh, technique, using the fiber fill. So, the time are we at? 28 minutes? Okay. So, I'll probably do the rest of this, like I said, for a Patreon video showing you how to do it, and you can go support my Patreon. So basically what I'm going to do is sew this uh, fabric eye onto the face. And these faces are fun to make. You could make them as silly or as serious you want to make them look. Um, they're the perfect thing to to do when you're feeling stressed out and you just want to express yourself constructively. And you'd be surprised what you end up with when you're done with it. Because <clears throat> it's just pure expression. And that's something that's not encouraged enough within this Western culture, we're encouraged to be on their cell phones 24-7 and texting and um, creating dramas everywhere and <laughs> setting fires and running away and setting more fires, <laughs> metaphorically speaking, of course. <laughs> You'd hope, right? <laughs> I think the full moon's going to be coming soon because the moon's getting bigger as well as the Mercury retrograde. So. Kind of a double whammy, so just be really careful. Um, if you work out in the public arena, try to keep your head as best you can. You know, I, uh, I envy, well, I don't envy those people that are working the nine to five out in this world, because 
there's a lot of people that are uh, not so happy about having to do that. And when it's hot, people get really heated even more so. <clears throat> Tempers flare, um, full moon in effect, um, Mercury retrograde coming. It's like, oh, we're at 30 minutes. Okay. Let's keep check checking the time because my camera will, it'll just stop, you know, stop recording and I'm still, and I'm still talking. <laughs> that happened this morning, so I'm trying to keep alert on this. I'll just show you how to sew this one last one on there. <clears throat> and then I'll put the rest of the process of this uh, on the Patreon. And you could check out and support my Patreon. How does that sound? <laughs> this is kind of like a sneak peek. And I kind of like wondered if it would be okay to smoke on my Patreon. But fuck it, I'm going to do it. What do I have to lose? I haven't put that many videos up there for my Patreon. So just load it up. <clears throat> loaded up with some videos. I think art tutorials are fun and I think it's cool to do like a smoke session while you're creating art because it shows that cannabis is more than just an herb where you can just use it to socialize with other people. Um, it's definitely an herb that you can use to um, help you feel good about, oh shit, feel good about dumping stuff on the floor. Help you feel good about um, expressing your creativity and um, uh, expressing your creativity without any inner critic go constantly going at it on you saying, hey, that looks weird. Why are you doing that? You know, people get that a lot. And that's why a lot of people don't do art because they want it to be perfect. <clears throat> they want to be like they want to be Picasso or Van Gogh overnight or something like that. And what they don't realize is that these people, it took them a while to get where they were at. And a lot of these people, they were really passionate about art and they wanted to um, let it be a part of their whole world. And that's what happened with them. I really like Van Gogh. He's one of my favorite artists. I like a lot of artists, but he's one of my favorite artists. <clears throat> if you ever want to see a movie by about him and his life, check out the one with uh, was it Kirk Douglas. Uh, definitely was it Michael Douglas. <laughs> yeah, it was Kirk Douglas, his dad. <clears throat> he was in a movie called Lust for Life. And it's the story of Van Gogh. And a lot of people have probably seen this movie, but a lot of people probably haven't. So, um, yeah, and if you guys have any suggestions for movies or whatever, Feel free to drop them down in the comment section below as far as art goes. Um, I only get Netflix and um, Hulu and I have YouTube. <laughs> I don't have cable, so keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, I've seen some art movies. Some of them I like, some of them I don't. Don't like so much. Some of them is just like trying to capture the real essence of that what that artist was. Um, and sometimes you don't really know how how accurate it really is unless you actually hung out with that artist, you know. That's the only way you know. So that's how you do it, pretty much. And then you can add nose. The nose can be the same sort of technique. Or you can get more intricate. I mean, look at this nose. It's just like one long tube. <laughs> or this nose. What's the other one? Or this nose, you know. I mean, you could cho choose how you want to make the noses or his nose that matches exactly with his skin tone. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to do the rest of this on my Patreon. So go to my Patreon. I'll leave the link for my Patreon in the description below. And also check out my BitChute channel, which is www.bitshoot.com slash darkmoon666. And check out my Black Junction TV channel as well. <clears throat> and that's HTTPS colon two backslashes Black Junction TV backslash Odetta, which is spelled capital O, lowercase d e t t a, um, 369. So I have all these links in the description below. 
and yeah that's pretty much how you do it um but when you hand sew you want to make sure that you sew it really securely on there so don't just sew it a few times around really get in there and sew it really good to it's tight where you feel like it won't come off because if you do get these dirty um you want to spot spot on clean them but they are um washing machine safe but it'll take forever and a day to dry to tell you the truth unless you have a dryer that you can throw them into um but try to avoid getting them really dirty i mean when i make these they're gonna these heads these doll heads these big doll heads i'm just gonna make them as uh, a work of art that you can hang up on your wall so because i think this would be cool if you can hang this dude up on your wall <laughs> The African herbal shaman guy, medicine guy, who's also possibly a psychic. <laughs> Alrighty guys, uh, let me grab my my jointage, jointage point. <laughs> Find my, my lighter. It's always some sort of complication there. <laughs> Here's my lighter. All right. Thanks for joining me today, guys. And definitely make sure to check out my Patreon, my Black Junction TV channel, my BitChute channel. Um, yeah. And if you want to support this channel, you can subscribe to my channel, <laughs> all of my channels, this one, the uh, Healing with Color, and the Dark Moon Doll channel. You can also go to my PayPal and donate a dollar or more. And include with your donation a question you'd like to see on an upcoming show. So yeah, <clears throat> I'll always like to give back. If someone donates to this channel, then I give back in that way. Um, if someone buys something from my shop, then I give them a free handmade gift or two. So remember that if you guys help me, I give back to you. So thanks for joining me, guys. Um, brightest blessings to you all, and I hope you have really creative evening or morning or afternoon. <laughs>